episode 117, Restaurant Marketing Secrets. I'm your host, Matt Plapp, and we are brought to you by America's Best Restaurants. America's Best Restaurants is on a path to help you, restaurant owners, find more frequent customers. The majority of our focus is with independent restaurant owners, but there is some with franchise owners who are left on what I call the marketing island. Yes, you brought a franchise, you bought a franchise that's really cool, that's got great products, it has cool systems. But at the end of the day, if consumers have no clue what that franchise means, it doesn't matter. Great example is an awesome pizza brand from Cincinnati called La Rosa's, which I eat at all the time. I never forget four or five years ago, we got a call from their company looking for help with a franchisee in Tennessee. Because you open up a La Rosa's in Northern Kentucky, it's going to do good. Everybody here knows it. It's got equity. You open it in Tennessee, nobody gives you shit because they don't know what La Rosa's is. So we work with restaurants that need help identifying the people who should know about them and eat there on the regular because frequent customers pay the bills. So today we're talking about marketing and we're talking more specifically about marketing messaging on social media. And you're getting this a little bit of taste of Matt Platt, but also you're getting the opinion from the editors. That's what it says at the top of the page. Page two, from the editors. And I'm looking at the Harvard Business Review special issue, winter 2022. The cover of it is marketing in the age of connection. It is a picture of a cell phone with three darts on a bullseye right in the middle. And it couldn't be more accurate because your customers are on their phones. They're not on their sofas anymore. When they're on their sofas, they're on their phones. So the days of marketing and advertising on radio and TV and those places have gone by the wayside. Now you've got to market and advertise on the cell phone. But here's the problem. People are watching TV with an expectation of a commercial. I'm not on Facebook with the expectation of your commercial. Two paragraphs that are in here that are very impactful on page two. It's easy to succumb to the temptation to use social media only to promote your products. Listen to that. It's easy to succumb to the temptation to use social media only to promote your products. If I go to any restaurant, you know what? I'm going to go to Facebook. I'm not going to say the name of the restaurant. I'm just going to randomly pull up a restaurant in my area. And let's see what they do. I'm going to go with an independent. And this is an independent I grew up eating at, but I, haven't, I only eat there probably once every six months nowadays. But it's great food. Okay. So, number one, they have a pinned post from February 9th, 2021. Not really sure why. That is interesting. But they made a post an hour ago. Try our oven roasted turkey breast dressing. And it's got a picture of a house with a bunch of chairs. I guess that's an empty house for Thanksgiving. One day ago, they've got a double-decker turkey sandwich. Four days ago, two people toasting. Cheers to the weekend. The day before that, a sandwich. Day before that, happy Veterans Day. Something with their menu. Their food, holidays around the corner, perfect place to host your event. So here's why I'm telling you this. This restaurant has to come to the tempt- succumb to the temptation to only use Facebook to promote them. Here's what's funny. This restaurant is less than a mile from a high school that's playing in the state semifinals football games the Friday after Thanksgiving. Not one mention of it. And I could probably find 20 other things in sports that are happening in that area that would relate more to their customers than half of these lame-ass food posts. The second part I I circled on page two. And it talked about, let me me read the whole paragraph. It says, are you undervaluing undervaluing your customers? Doing so without building consumer trust will erode your customer value and soon enough, your earnings too. That's in part because users are fed up with companies' branded content in their social feeds. Instead, they are creating private groups on social media to have conversations with people in that interest. And it's the truth. This restaurant right here is all, literally, I'm going to look back. Let me see how far I can go back and see if I can find something that has anything to do with the community. Gift certificate sales. Notice any of our new additions of their atmosphere, some bourbon, their buffet, Best of NKY, happy 14th anniversary. I'm all the way back to July. There's a t-shirt things. 
Okay, here we go. July 7th, they shared a post about six fun facts about Fort Mitchell. That actually does relate to their audience. So one time, let's say July 7th to August 7th, to October, September 7th, to October to November. So four months and two weeks ago, they shared something that's relative to their customers. Think about that. You need to stop using Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, LinkedIn, YouTube to market your restaurant. You need to create conversations. These are social platforms. Does anybody listen to this have that friend that sells life insurance and every time you see them socially, they want to sell you insurance or they sell a, they're an MLM or they sell weight loss supplements. I had a guy that I knew years ago Every time I would see him anywhere, it was all about this nutritional shake he was selling to lose weight. And I didn't want to be mean and act egotistical, but I'm like, bro, look at me. If I lose five or 10 pounds, I'm in a good shape. If I lose 40 or 50, like you're talking about, I got a problem. I'm in Ethiopia. I'm not a big guy. Think about what social media is. Take the first part of it. It's social consumers do not want to hear about your restaurant. You want proof? Let me see how many fans this page has. This page has 11,000 fans. So this post, we'll go here to the food one. 64, 10, and 5, so 75 people. Uh, 30 people, 65 people, 65 people, 53, 43 people. 49 people. Well, I say people. I'm saying engagements. It's probably less because somebody can share, comment, and like. So this one's like 60. That's 54. 67. 75. So let's just look at a number. There are about 60 people consistently engaging in their stuff. 60 divided by 11,000. That is 0.005. So if my math, my high school math is right, that is half of 1% of their audience is engaging in their content. Let me read back to you from the Harvard Business Review. Now, I hope you have trust in me at this point if you're listening to this podcast because I have a deep understanding of what I'm talking about and I'm passionate about it and I have the proof of thousands, tens of thousands of marketing campaigns with restaurants across the United States to back up what I say. But just in case you don't, this is Harvard. It's a pretty smart people. It's easy to succumb to the temptation to use social media only to promote your products. Users are fed up with companies' branded content in their feeds. So there you go. That's today's topic. I want you to do an audit. Do an audit of the past 60 days of your Facebook feed and your Instagram feed. And I want you to text me. So let's just say, for example, in that 60 days, you've made one just an easy number, 100 posts. And you add Facebook and Instagram together. So 150 on each one, 100 total in those 60 days. How many of them were about your community, about your employees? Let's say this. How many of them were not about, were not self-serving? We're not trying to get people to eat food, buy food, buy gift cards, book parties. I don't have a problem with that existing, but it shouldn't be 99%. It should honestly be about 40%. 40% of your content should be geared towards your customers. 20% should be, or yeah, 20% should be under what I call undercover, and then 40% should be about you. So if you have 10 posts, four of those are about what's happening in your customers' lives. As an example, a post that we made last week on restaurants. Let me go and see what one looked like. Let me go to a client here. We made a post last week for our clients and some of our clients made it on their own, but our advice was, hey, let's have a conversation about what everybody's excited to eat next week for Thanksgiving. And let me look at some results here. Let's see. What are you thankful for? Nope. I'm looking for the meal one. That's not it. That's a video. Trying to find one here. Let me find. Maybe I'm on a. Uh, let's see here. 
try to scroll through some timelines here and find one of these posts. But this post was about what are your favorite top, what, like, what was the favorite sides, I think we say. Oh, I'm striking out here because these are the, we, we mix it up with some clients. Clients get to pick what they did. Some clients did, what are you thankful for this year? Some clients did, what are your favorite sides? Here's a thankful one. 18 people talking about what they're thankful for. Okay, let me try. Third time's a charm, right? There we go. So here's the post. Let's give thanks this Thanksgiving. We'd like to thank you with a $25 gift card to XYZ Restaurant. Just let us know your favorite Thanksgiving dish for a chance to win. And it's got some different, what's one dish you must have on your table? And it's got some things, you know, and win the comment by 1130. One person will be randomly selected. You'll be sent a message in Messenger. 263 people commented. I make a mean pumpkin pie that I love. Everyone that eats it raves and wants my recipe. There are many dishes I love on Thanksgiving, but hands down my favorite is homemade sausage stuffing. That sounds good. My favorite and my kid's favorite is sausage stuffing. That's the second time I've ever heard of it. My mother-in-law's from Germany and showed me how to make it. Two different people. Sweet potato casserole with pecan topping. I love sweet potato souffle. Uh, I actually love the sides more than the main dish. Can't narrow it down to just one side. So I have to go with green bean casserole, creamed corn casserole, stuffing, and butternut squash soup. So instead of, let me go back to that restaurant. Let's see what they posted for Thanksgiving. So their Thanksgiving post was about trying oven roast and turkey breast dressing, blah, blah, blah. Six shares, 14 reactions, and no, that's it. Six shares, no, go comments. So 20 people interacted, whereas the one I just read to you with all sorts of stuff had how many people? 123 reactions, three shares, 263 comments. Now let's be fair. Let's see how many Facebook fans. Okay, about the same amount of fans. This one's got a couple thousand more, so not much. But the key part is this didn't have much to do about the audience. Now this can go even deeper. So that to me is what I would call that 20%. That's an undercover post. So remember, 40% should be about you. Nothing wrong with that. That's what you're in business for, right? 40% should be about your customers and then 20% undercover. An undercover post is that right there. I got you to engage for the type of our contest telling me your favorite side. So the conversation was about not the restaurant, but I got you to take an action and I'm trying to implant in there with us. is like, this is a great time for people to eat out the next two weeks because they slave their, they work their butts off on Wednesday and Thursday to make all these great meals. And like I'm eating out other days. So we're trying to get in their mind, but then a non undercover post, a completely community one would be about that high school football team that is playing this Friday. Good luck to the Beachwood Tigers. Good luck to Lloyd Memorial Juggernaut. You guys are battling it out for a chance to go to the state championship this Friday. Good luck. Comment below who you think is going to win and what the score is, and we'll give away a $100 gift card. So that's completely about the community. But then you got your other items about, hey, we're open. We got gift cards. We got this, got that. But take it not from Matt Platt, but from the Harvard Business Review. And I guess, honestly, though, I could probably argue I have more data. It's not as much that proves that from our re local restaurants than Harvard does. And it's true. Your content needs to be about your consumers, not about you. That's all I got this episode of America's Best Restaurants, Restaurant Marketing Secrets. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to go to americasbestrestaurants.com. In the top right corner, I want you to click Restaurant Marketing Help. And I want you to click that, go down there and schedule a strategy call. Now, you know, best case, you actually watch the three podcasts. There's three podcasts I did with Hillcrest Foods. They're a food distributor that focuses exclusively on independent restaurants in the Cleveland area. There's three episodes, ABR, Track, Build, Retain, where I talk to them about my theories and tactics, and I think you'll enjoy them. I don't think, I know you'll enjoy them, you know, especially if you're up on educating yourself, becoming awesome at what, we, what you want to do with your restaurant. Then there's a chance to schedule a strategy call. You can schedule a call with somebody from my team, 
and you can let them know what you're doing, how you're doing it, why you're doing it, what your dreams and aspirations are. And they'll give you advice. And that advice might be, here's somebody to talk to besides us. It might be, let's have a deeper conversation. It might be some strategies without a deeper conversation. But the cool thing is it doesn't cost you any money. And you're getting on the call with somebody who is much more knowledgeable at restaurant marketing than you are. And we can arm you with ideas and information to go to the next level. And then if for some reason there is a chance to work together, that happens on future calls. That's all I got. I'll see you next episode.